We begin today with the president getting Corey's dad a new uniform. Personally, I don't think he has the legs for the skirt, but that's why I'm not the president. The president does want to find some new designs for the uniforms because it's a new administration and this drip is old as dinosaur footprints. Corey has the bright idea to get Raven involved because I'm pretty sure reviews were down at this point. Raven just pops the hell up mid call, which brings up questions about how she got in the back of the White House without a chaperone. Raven has that level of clearance? Does the government secretly employ psychic black people to spy on us? Keep watching and I'm sure they'll answer some or none of those questions. Victor wants to know how she ended up here. And if you haven't guessed yet, psychic powers, something, something, vision, something, something. Corey wants some of the dough for the clothing because he called her, but she technically saw it in a vision, so she does have a point. Victor makes her give up 50-50, which she had to fly here, make uniforms, do all types of stuff. Meanwhile, Corey couldn't even take the time out of his day to get a proper edge up. They're amicable by the end, and there's some beautiful black family bonding. Raven and Corey go walking through the White House, and and she can't believe he actually lives here. She's scared about being up here though, even though she didn't bust into the White House kitchen earlier. A tour comes through and catches them lacking. Tour guys talking about a grandfather clock and this actual grandfather, he busts floors. At that moment, Raven has a vision that the grandfather lets go of his buffer and manslaughters the president. As she comes out of the vision, the president walks out of his office, just like she saw. Raven sees the buffer losing control, so she decides to do her best Sean Taylor impersonation and sacks the president clean. She runs the hell off before Secret Service arrives and she spends the rest of her life in Guantanamo. The president exclaims that he was attacked by some kook and we were one letter away from this being one of those episodes I don't play music over. Conveniently, all all these people who all have cameras didn't take a picture of this assaulter of democracy. The president won't rest until he finds her and secret service. Raven comes running into the kitchen where her father is preparing food. She questions if there's anywhere to hide. Corey comes running in chasing her and the dad just thinks they're playing hide and seek so that's convenient. The president announces himself before walking in like most people do then jogs in with secret service behind him as if someone didn't just crack him five minutes ago. He's telling Chef Victor about that kook that attacked him. He'll never forget that face, that voice, those wild eyes. Well, he's willing to put that behind him for now because he's excited to meet Victor's daughter. Victor goes calling for Raven, but luckily, Corey has the genius idea to hide her under the couch cushion. This actually worked somehow, so they decide to meet Raven face to face at the presentation. Right now, he has to get back to the cool cunt. Raven realizes that attacking a seating president isn't usually something you should do directly before trying to get government bonds from him. So she's thinking about canceling the meeting. She wants to tell him the truth. Corey knows that psychic kooks are not a good way of explaining things. Raven has the bright idea to put a wig and skirt on Corey. Carisha screams, man, what I won't do for money, which is a much more astute observation than I could make. He asks why Raven couldn't be in disguise. And she explains that it's because he said he would never forget her eyes. That makes so much sense. And I'm so glad they explained it to me. Quick question though, wouldn't he recognize Corey's big ass head since he sees him literally every day? They hear a knock on the door and it's Corey's stupid ass friends. They note how much Raven looks like Corey, which like I said, stupid ass. Newt falls in love with Corey and this is gonna turn into a very special episode one way or another, isn't it? Carisha got hemorrhoids or something and falls the hell out because they're flaring up. Newt talks about how beautiful she was. Those eyes, that face. Keep in mind that's really Corey's eyes and face. Corey goes to meet with the president. Everyone is disgusted by the head swelling though. The president asks if this is Victor's beautiful daughter and says there's nothing stronger than a father's love which is foul. Carisha is a freak, so she starts trying to throw that, twerk that, shake that, and bounce that all over the Oval Office. Raven's outside the window dressed like a gardener, so once again, if she's not gonna block those unforgettable eyes, why is Corey in this bad wig throwing ass? He brings Mina in dressed like an usher at a Cowboys game. Next, he brings in Newt dressed like uh, David Spade as a security guard at the Olympic torch ceremony. Newt tries hollering some weak ass game. Carisha ain't impressed. Victor walks in with tea and freaks the hell out at his son dressed like he wants to be on Flavor of Love season one. Raven somehow gets her mustache stuck to the window and the president sees her and yells, get her, it's the kook. They're on this Scooby-Doo ass chase 
and the Secret Service is secretly not doing their service. She's getting light on everybody and proving what an elite athlete really looks like. Raven comes running into the hallway where the incident occurred earlier, and the scene is setting up just like she saw in her vision. She somehow tackles the president for the second time today, and the Secret Service needs to get fired and investigated at this point. The clock fell down just like she saw, and she ends up saving the president's life. He asks how she knew that the clock was gonna fall, and she basically screams about her psychic powers she's tried to hide her whole life in front of this little crowd. When the rest of the people run in, Victor is ready to lose his job, but the Secret Service isn't, so they detain Raven. Luckily, the president pardons her though. Newt is now wondering, if this is Raven, then who is that dreamboat? Right then, Corey rips off his wig. Newt isn't ready to accept himself, but Corey doesn't care, he wants his money. The tour guide tells him they better not switch her uniform. They're part of the tradition of the White House. If you go around changing tradition, people won't vote for you. The president asked if any of the kids are of voting age. None of them are, so that problem's dead in the waters. Isn't Raven in college, but whatever, whatever. The president congratulates Raven on her design and tells Corey to stick to pants. Mina and Newt are gonna change and Newt can't take any more change. I feel like there's like five metaphors going on that I'm just gonna ignore. Victor tells his kids they're dumb as hell and their plan was dumb as hell, but he's glad that they're finally working together as brother and sister. Wait, no, sister and sister. Corey can finally pop his boobs. There's some Mina Bahavian, that's so Pushnik ending. I think that's enough though for the day.